coming up on Mountain News this morning, the recent SOAR Summit announced there would be funding for two water plants in eastern Kentucky. And sports betting in the Commonwealth is already starting to show signs of economic growth. Dedicated to eastern and southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Madison Carmouche. The time is 531 and let's check in with Chief Forecaster Brandon Robinson for a look at your forecast this morning. It was a little bit rainier than I thought it was going to be this morning, but mm. I guess that's my fault for uh, not listening. Did you not check the app before yeah, you left that? I didn't. That's, so. that's okay. But Personal yeah, it problem. is a little bit on the soggy side this morning. And I tell you, I'm a little sleepy just because it's kind of overcast and dreary out there this morning. So if there's any stumbles, just remember. Foggy in my head, foggy, well, not as foggy outside this morning. Let's take a look at live pinpoint Doppler radar, and you see, again, some spotty chances. Anywhere you see darker green, not all that green is reaching the ground. So let me go ahead and preface what I'm getting ready to say with that. But anywhere you see those darker greens, and I'm going to zoom in on one right fast to kind of show you what I'm talking about. So right here, I believe that is Morgan County, looking a little bit on the soggy side near West Liberty, and then over toward uh, Malaga, over uh, in uh, Wolf County there and over toward uh, Campton and Hazel Green and Candle City, some of those areas, kind of seeing some of those heavier bands of rain. Now we have seen over, also over into Elliott County there, just south of Sandy Hook, but uh, we're all, we've are we been seeing again, spotty showers off and on throughout the evening. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit more, see if I can find anywhere else. Maybe toward Anvil and McKee, a little bit of rain too. I just noticed that there's a, uh, a uh, sail right there on the uh, Mingo Logan County line there. It's got a little bit of heavy rain in it, but UVA wise, not too bad. Some of our cooler spots in the region are in southwest Virginia this morning, upper 50s in Grundy, Clintwood, and Wise right now. Everybody else is in the low to mid 60s out there and not much of a change in some areas and then several degrees warmer in other areas from about 24 hours ago. So your breakfast forecast, stay inside. It's going to be gloomy regardless until you have to get outside. But again, take your rain gear. Could be a bit of a soggy day, at least in the beginning. Hopefully I'll have some better news for you here in just a few minutes. Madison. Brandon, thank you. Police arrested Brooks Houck last week, more than eight years after the disappearance of Crystal Rogers. He is charged with her murder. Houck appeared in court via video. Special Prosecutor Shane Young said his office is investigating if Houck's brother, former Bardstown police officer Nicholas Houck, was involved in the murder of Crystal's father. The judge heard the motion to reduce Houck's bond from $10 million to $500,000, but no decision was made. We were waiting for testing to come back on the firearm we believe was used to murder Tommy Ballard, a firearm that we purchased from Nicholas Houck, who was using a fake name. The judge says it will take him some time to review the bond reduction request for Houck. The next date for a proceeding in the case is on February 8th. Hauk is being held in the Hardin County Jail. One person is dead after an incident involving a tractor in Lawrence County. The Lawrence County Deputy Coroner responded to a call before 9 p.m. Wednesday night on, right, on the right fork of Irish Creek in the Webville community. The Lawrence County Deputy Coroner, along with other first responders, arrived a little after 9.30. 70-year-old William Edward of Deerfield of Webville was pronounced dead at the scene around 10.30. A Harlan County man what has been taken into custody for his role in a theft case involving an elderly woman. Thursday morning, officers found 31-year-old Paul Wynn of Kenvere on Gino Loop in the Shields community. He was wanted on two warrants, one from the Harlan County Sheriff's Office for receiving stolen property and one from KSP for burglary and theft of an ATV. He is being held in the Harlan County Detention Center on $7,500 bond. Police in Laurel County are asking for help in finding a truck that was stolen. Take a look at your screen. Deputies with the Laure Laurel County Sheriff's Office are looking for this truck. It was stolen in the Lilly community on Monday. If anyone has any information, you are asked to contact the Sheriff's Office or Laurel County Dispatch at the numbers on your screen. More than $26 million announced, were announced at the SOAR Summit. 
that will help several counties and various projects. The city of Jenkins was one of the recipients being awarded more than $300,000. WYMT's RJ Johnson spoke with Mayor Todd DePriest on why this funding is helpful. More than $350,000 will be awarded to the city of Jenkins to help update their wastewater treatment plant. City officials will be working to make sure the funding goes to good use. Yeah, well, we'll be working with the engineers to look at, you know, what's needed the most, uh, you know, how we can get the most bang for the buck with the money we're going to spend, uh, being able to make the most of the, the money that's become available for us. Jenkins Mayor Todd Dupree says this facility hasn't been updated in nearly 30 years, which is why this money will be a big help. Stuff wears out and you try to take care of it best you can, but uh, this will give us uh, much needed money for upgrades and repairing and, and uh, fixing issues that we've had over the years that's uh, been difficult to deal with. He says it's a tedious process cleaning the water. From the time it comes to the plant and the time it's uh, treated and, and then let back out into the streams and uh, making sure those processes are working properly and, and as efficient as they can be and, and doing all the jobs that they're uh, meant to do. He says this will reach homes they are rebuilding following the July 2022 flood, increasing the capacity the facility can hold. It is and, and you know with the, the disaster recovery and, and, and working after the flood and building homes and, and trying to get places for, for everybody no matter where they're from. Uh, but being able to have that capacity to add more homes on uh, will be a big plus for us. Dupree says this is all a part of an effort to revitalize some areas of the city and to keep things up to date. In Jenkins, RJ Johnson, WIMT Mountain News. The summit was earlier this week. For the complete list of recipients from the summit, you can visit our website at WYMT.com. And also at the SOAR Summit, more than $3 million was awarded to Hazard in Perry County to help build a new water plant. The Hazard water plant is able to provide 5 million gallons of water a day to much of Perry County. Once a new water plant in Buckhorn is complete, the county will be able to provide 8 million gallons of water a day. This is for the transmission lines, and our transmission lines are going to go from the water plant um, from the town of Buckhorn all the way to the industrial park and it's going to increase the amount of water that we can get to the industrial park. Officials say with this grant the Coalfields Industrial Park will be able to support more businesses. Kentucky is moving forward to establish electric vehicle charging stations in the state. Governor Bashir announced the first round of awards for developers to design, build, operate and maintain a statewide network of charging stations. 21 projects have been announced so far, including one in Somerset. Each charging station will have at least four chargers. They will be accessible to the public 24-7. The first patchy frost of the season could be possible this weekend. Morning temperatures this weekend might be a good 50 degrees cooler than some of the afternoons earlier this week. With the possibility of frost showing up near you, it may be time to start thinking about your plants. For the tropicals, it's probably time to bring those on in. However, if you're in town, this patchy frost, you can still leave outside your gardenias and your waxy leafed house plants for another week or two. You just want to tuck them under a tree canopy so that the leaves are covering them. Pemberton Schmidt says other kinds of plants may need to be treated differently. She adds, there may be a point where you will need to keep your plants inside. When it comes to the numbers, Kentucky could be winning in terms of sports betting. We are just four weeks into sports betting in the state and already tens of millions of dollars are coming in from the in-person and online betting. Jessica Umbro takes a look at the numbers. Now that it's legal, Kentuckians are taking advantage uh, of both in-person and mobile applications to spend their entertainment dollars. Entertainment dollars that Governor Andy Bashir says between last Thursday and Sunday totaled $66.5 million online and $1.7 million in person. These numbers shouldn't be a surprise to anyone because Kentuckians have wanted this option for so long. The convenience of online betting is changing how some watch sports. Gabe Pruitt of Red Mile Racing says in-person attendance of sporting events has been relatively unaffected by online betting. In terms of foot traffic on the property, it has gone down slightly. 
uh, but, but not much at all. Sports betting is not just about who wins and who loses. There are many different scenarios that you can bet on throughout the game. Pruitt tells me that these options make for a lively viewing experience here at Red Mile. People are coming out and they're watching the game, and as that game changes in progress, you know, they're making additional wagers on what they see. Justin Califelt of FanDuel says demand is high. Everything we see from our customers uh, tell us they, they love the range of options available. But online betting makes barriers to participate in sports betting much lower. Just over a week ago at 6 a.m. last Thursday morning, it only took 10 seconds for the first bet to come through. So I think that really talks to the, the pent up demand of the customer. In Lexington, Jessica Umbro, WKYT. Coming up, Saturday Night Live is returning soon after canceling its season earlier this year. Showers will make their way through the region as we go into today, but the big question is how long will they last? I'll have the latest timing. It's about three minutes.